In the last video, I've described how Joseph Thompson, or J.J. Thompson as he's often called, how he was able to use this setup to measure the charge to mass ratio of these particles which came which came out of the this negative pole when um, he put a high voltage through it and and when when he measure uh, the speed and the angles he was able to determine the charge to mass ratio of the particles whatever they are but how did how did joseph thompson how did jj thompson conclude that these are actually electrons in the sense that we know it today. Let's um, briefly have a look at his conclusion or his reasonings. Clear this part off. Now, um, the particles that he observed and measured um, as from, from the charge to mass ratio which was measured. Let me write it down again. So there was this charge to the mass. I use the letter M E for the mass of this particle oh, so that was 1.758 times 10 to the power of minus uh, no actually to the power of 11 coulomb per kilogram right that's the specific charge charge to mass ratio. Now from this charge to mass ratio, although the, the separate values of the charge and the mass was not known, Thomson was able to compare this value with the charge to mass ratio of hydrogen ion. Okay. So compare with uh, I'll use Q over M H to represent the charge to mass ratio of the hydrogen ion. Okay, where H here stands for hydrogen. So compared with the hydrogen ion, um, oh uh, no, Wait, let me write it this way. Compared with um. The hydrogen H plus ion. He was able to. Sh uh, he, he found that he found that these particles, these particles, which are new particles at that time to to people, part uh, particle is. Is about it's about two thousand times lighter. So that's one thing. Now, if these particles are so much lighter than the hydrogen ion, you know the hydrogen ion just means. Um, a hydrogen atom that has lost an electron as we understand it today so even even in, at that time um, I suppose the idea is that the hydrogen the size of hydrogen ion is the size of an ion is really uh, 
and maybe the mass right is, is really very similar to to that of the atom itself before it has lost the charge Be because uh, masses of these ions can be measured chemically so compared with the hydrogen ion the part this particle is nearly 2000 times lighter okay so that means that this particle can actually be part of part of um, the atoms in in the material and the other thing that thompson did was that he repeated this experiment using different metals now this um i'll introduce a new name uh, that i've not mentioned before this metal from where negative charges are emitted okay this metal where negative charges come out has a name it has a technical name the technical name is called a cathode and the other side which is positive that's called an anode okay i'll just emphasize here that cathode specifically means the the um electrode or the the, the plate where negative charges where electrons come out All right it doesn't actually mean negative pole now i shall go into the details of the final distinction uh, for now but let me just continue uh, in thompson's experiment he tried using different metals for the cathode he used different metals for cathode and he get the same answer the same charge to mass ratio each time he measure it using copper and then he measure it again and he change that to iron and then he do it again change that to tungsten i'm just uh guessing a few examples so he he used different metals and he, each time he do the measurement he found that he get the same answer he found that these particles coming out um, has have the same charge to mass ratio so it seems like whatever these particles are they are they 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 have they occur everywhere they occur everywhere so that eventually led must have led to the conclusion that these are particles and, and because they're so much lighter than atom atoms these are particles that must be found in all atoms whatever the material whether it's iron or water or anything they must be found in all atoms and therefore it must be part of the things uh, whatever things it, it is that makes up an atom so finally with these ideas in mind thompson created the plum pudding model of the atom plum pudding model now we must remember that that was 1897 over 100 years ago and people know very little about atoms compared to what is known today and today we know about at atoms we know about electrons protons neutrons and nucleus of the atoms and, and so on and so on so we really know a lot more about atoms today but at that time in in 1897 people know about atoms but they don't know what's inside they don't know what's inside at all they know how they react from chemistry so it is one of the first idea this plum pudding model about what it looks like in the atom now to, to understand what what this plum pudding model is let's start by looking at a plum pudding now a plum pudding what is a plum pudding a plum pudding is really another name for a christmas pudding 
Now, if you have eaten a Christmas pudding before, it looks like a very sweet cake with lots and lots of um, uh, sugar, syrup and dried fruits inside. And in particular, for example, there would be there would be lots of um, lots of grapes, lots of raisins inside. Right, so these are the, the raisins. Raisins, lots of raisins, and this is the Christmas pudding. So Thompson's idea was that the raisins are the raisins are like the electrons, are like these very light electrons, and the pudding is like the whole atom. So the the, the stuffs that the, the syrup uh, and, and all the other stuffs that um, contain that contain the raisins. Thompson imagined that they are sort of positive charges that are that are spread out over the atom. So there are these positive charges spread out uh, uh, around the pudding. Okay, and there are these tiny particles of electrons which are negatively charged and which are inside inside this pudding. Right, now, one um, point which um, I would like to talk about before we leave this topic is this part about the hydrogen ion. Now, we must remember that that was, uh, it was at a time when, as I said, very little was known about the inside of the atom. So, it would really not be possible at that time that they, that they know they actually know the mass of um, the 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 uh, charge of or, or the mass of hydrogen ion. Now, what was known at that time was actually the specific charge. In other words, the Q charge to mass ratio of the hydrogen ion. Right? The separate charge and the separate mass are not known. Okay? Measurements of charge would happen more than 10 years later for the electron itself. So the question, interesting question is how, how did people actually know the charge to mass ratio of the hydrogen ion. How was that measured? Was it measured using a similar method uh, as was done for the electron? Actually, no. This method was applied for the first time, right? With, with a, a beam of part charged particles coming out and, and deflection in a tube. It was the very first time it was developed and, and improved to uh, until it's good enough to do this measurement for the electron. So that wasn't the method used. The method that was used, um, I've unfortunately not been able to find any detail by uh, just search, uh, there is a quick search on the internet. But it was, it is mentioned in this uh, topic, discovery of electron uh, in Wikipedia, that this specific charge of the hydrogen ion was was obtained using an electro chemical an electrochemical method okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to make some guesses about how this value was obtained using electrochemical methods and then um, i'm going to show how from this value we can arrive at this conclusion that the electron is, is actually 2,000 times lighter than the hydrogen ion. Okay, so let's clear this off. Okay. 
Okay. Now, what I'd like to do is to um, think about the hydrogen ion. So the hydrogen. Say the hydrogen ion, H plus. Now I shan't go into any details about electrochemical methods, right? Except to write down what was known at that time. It was known that, for example, one mole of hydrogen ion would have a mass of one gram. So this is something that can be measured using uh, uh, electrolysis in chemistry, using electricity and, and, and chemistry um, methods. So I'm just going to assume that these are the numbers that uh, were known to Thomson. It was known from work that has been done by chemists, by chemistry at that time, that one mole of hydrogen ion has a mass of one gram. Okay. Now it is it was also known, it was also known that the charge, the charge of this the charge of this is is nine six four eight five coulomb. Right, is this number is over ninety six thousand coulombs. Now how would they have known this? Well, if you have learned about um, something called electrolysis in chemistry, you would know that when you pass an electric current through, say, sulfuric acid, um, hydrogen would be released from dilute sulfuric acid. And, and it was known, this kind of experiment was known at that time, and the amount of charge in the electric current that you have to pass through, say, a dilute sulfuric acid, in order to produce one gram of um, hydrogen, for example, the amount of charge needed was known, and it was in fact first measured by Faraday. And and this amount of charge that is needed to release one mole of hydrogen ion, uh, to discharge one mole of hydrogen ion, turn it into a, a hydrogen gas, is actually has a name. It's called one Faraday. All right, this is a unit which was given uh, uh, after the name of uh, Michael Faraday, who actually who, who must have measured this this charge. Right, so this, assuming that this was the information that was available at that time from chemistry, we would know that um, the charge of one mole of hydrogen ion is this value and we also know that one gram is the mass of one mole of hydrogen ion now at that time i don't think they would know the actual number of one mole of particles meaning that they might not have known the actual value of the avogadro constant at that time but that is fine because with these two numbers, we have all we need to find the charge to mass ratio of um, the hydrogen ion. All we need is to divide this charge by this mass, and we have the charge to mass ratio. So even though we don't actually know the charge of a single hydrogen ion, we don't know the mass of a single hydrogen ion, we do know the charge of one mole of hydrogen ion, and we do know the mass of one mole of hydrogen ion. And that's good enough. So if we divide those, we we'll get 96485 coulomb divided by 1 gram, which is 0 0.001 kilogram. And then you can get an answer. Okay. Then after that, what I would like to have is I like to know how much heavier is the hydrogen ion compared to mass of an electron. So in other words, I want to find this. I want to find 
mass of the hydrogen atom or ion, which is the same, divided by the mass of the electron. And I, I can actually find this from those two numbers. Right? Notice that both the hydrogen and the electron has the same charge. Okay. Now at that time, that point might not have been entirely clear because people do not know that there's this electron going around a proton. This picture does not come until maybe 20 years after this. Okay, so, so there must have been some assumption at that time that, you, that um, because Thomson thought that an electron might be um, part of an atom, so it might seem logical to think that when a hydrogen atom when a hydrogen atom loses an electron, it becomes a hydrogen ion. So that means a hydrogen atom can turn into a positively charged hydrogen ion plus a negatively charged electron. So this might must have been the idea that that uh, goes round in, in uh, Thomson's mind. Okay. So with this understanding, then we know that. Um, the, the the idea is that the atom itself is neutral, right? It's neutral, meaning that it has zero charge. So if it separates out into an electron and the hydrogen ion, okay, it must mean that um, the electron and the hydrogen ion has opposite charges, but the two charges are equal in magnitude. So in other words, the Q here for the electron and the Q here, charge here for the hydrogen ion, they are equally big, right? Just opposite signs. So I use I've used Q for both of these. Now, and if I want mass of uh, hydrogen atom over mass of electron, I could actually get it by dividing those two. Um, I could divide that by that. So let me do it. I would take um, okay. I would take the charge over mass for the electron, and I divide this by the charge over mass for the hydrogen. So if you do this, you will find that it's equal to this. Okay, if you rearrange the algebra. Now, this means that I should take that number which is this, and divide by this number, which is this. And if you do that, okay, if you actually take this and divide by this, let's see what we get. We get 1, 8, 2, 3. And that's nearly the 2000 that I was talking about. In other words, the hydrogen ion, hydrogen ion or atom, would be nearly two thousand times heavier than the electron. Okay, of course, the hydrogen, when the hydrogen atom loses an electron to become the hydrogen ion, the hydrogen ion will be slightly lighter than the atom. But because we are talking about a, a, you know that the electron is actually two thousand times lighter, it means that the hydrogen ion and the hydrogen atom are not that different in mass. Just there's just a slight difference after it lost the electron. So this is a must. This is a fairly simple way to 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 find using the chem chemical knowledge that was available at that time is a fairly simple way to find the specific charge of the hydrogen ion and then to find to compare the masses of the electron to the mass of the hydrogen atom and from there um, Thomson concluded um, well I'm, I'm guessing here that it is from this kind of calculation that Thomson must have concluded 
that that um, electron is two thousand times, or almost almost two thousand times lighter than a hydrogen ion, and therefore that it can very easily be part of any or all atoms.